Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another hot take video. And today's hot take video is uh, one with a bit more broader focus. You see, in recent weeks I've seen people asking and theorising about some of the changes for any possible Jurassic World Evolution 3. And I've seen a lot of people requesting various strange game modes such as survival horror and FPS game modes be added to any possible Jurassic World Evolution 3. And this concerns me because I feel that these sorts of requests are demonstrative of a game audience trying to turn Jurassic World Evolution into something it isn't. Jurassic World Evolution as a series are park building games first and foremost and certain parts of the player base and frontier, in my opinion, need to remember that when it comes to any possible Jurassic World Evolution 3. They are park building and park management games first. They're not survival horror games, they're not first person shooters. I don't see people requesting similar game modes in Planet Zoo, some sort of escape the killer lions mode, and while I understand the idea is principally heavily based on what happens in the movies, I think it highlights a fundamental misunderstanding of the game's genre. So let's just kind of unpack this perspective a little bit. So the first thing I would say is that even as a park building and park management game, even Jurassic World Evolution 2 is still lacking in those regards. Even if we consider such game modes for any future Jurassic World Evolution 3, I would argue that the Jurassic World Evolution 2 experience the park building, the park management experience, which is really supposed to be the core experience of the title, they're still massively lacking and need considerable amounts of reworking. In that situation where you have a game where the core of the, the title is so bare bones and needs so much more work, I think it's foolhardy to focus on random other game modes such as survival horror escape your park modes, which is going to take obviously development time and development focus away from the core part of the game, which in itself needs a lot more work. I feel in that situation, we would just end up with a lackluster version of both the park building and park management sides, but also the escape the park survival horror side that I've seen people on Reddit clamouring for. The second thing I would say is that Jurassic World Evolution 2 already has a serious problem where it feels like there is a lack of focus. It feels like there is a lack of core focus on an element of the gameplay. You can see that in the complete lack and lacklustre implementation of management features in a game which Frontier themselves call a management simulator game. This lack of focus can also be seen in other areas, such as the issue of manufactured action, which is something that the IGN review for the title when it came out really heavily pointed at. There are conflicting elements, it seems, that Frontier or Universal, in trying to appeal to the largest possible range of audience in terms of interest but also age, um, and by doing that, they've sort of created a product where it feels it doesn't have a core focus. This results in all sorts of problems, like the combat system. You know, everyone says the combat system is needed, and it's it's obviously in there because it appeals to a certain audience of people, but the combat system is this sort of dinosaur kaiju wrestler style circle around animation looping sort of affair, which now even herbivores do to attack and kill one another. It's a very substandardized system that no one really likes or finds interesting, and it's in there because it appeals to a certain group of audience. And I'm not saying that the game should remove those elements, but what I am saying is that they shouldn't be a big part of the gameplay and that Frontier needs to focus on one significant core element and do it good, and then move on to adding new elements into the gameplay. And Jurassic World of Evolution 2 already highlights 
that the lack of focus on a good core element has been kind of detrimental to the title overall. Leading on from that is this idea that, to me, the game has to grow up. And what I mean by that is, you know, if we're going to have a good park building and park management game, then the park building and management areas of the title need a great deal of work and actually need development to get them to a good spot. Jurassic World Evolution 2 did attempt to correct some of the criticism from the first game in that there wasn't enough management, but as a result they gave us a scientist system and that was pretty poor. If they want to keep calling these park management games, then Jurassic World Evolution 3 needs to focus improving on the park management and adding complexity. This is the problem with having a game that has been targeted as such a wide audience. The difficulty and complexity of the game is so dumbed down that yes, a three-year-old might theoretically be able to play the game, but it also results in a product which is kind of lacking in soul and kind of lackluster. So, I would want Frontier to kind of make something that is not necessarily dumbed down to the point of becoming boring. I mean, I would also point out the various strange oddities of the park building area. You know, paths that cannot make bridges or tunnels. That for me is a hill I'm going to die on with Jurassic World Evolution 3. If the path system doesn't let us build bridges or tunnels, I'm not buying the game. That that's that's the hill I am dying. It is such a simple aspect of the tools. It's a system that we had back in the days of Zoo Tycoon 2. Planet Zoo and Planet Coaster allow us to build bridges and tunnels wherever we damn well like. The fact that we can't do it in Dress World Evolution 3, it just highlights a dumbing down of the park building mechanics and it's infuriating. So for me, me that is the hill I'm going to die on. Um, bridges and tunnels have to be in the game. But it's just, a, it's just a demonstration of, again, a lack of focus on the core area of the gameplay, which is building the park, managing the park. The core gameplay is not dinosaur combat. It's not the first person mode walking around the park. Something else that I think people haven't considered with these requests for a survival horror, escape your park when it goes wrong sort of game mode is that if your park goes wrong, you are playing the game badly. The whole point of, of the game is to run and build a park safely and prove that dinosaur parks like Jurassic Park can actually work. The point is not to build a park which deliberately is set out to fail. If you had a game mode like Escape Your Park when everything goes wrong, it would be a very contrived game mode where the game would literally force a situation to occur to allow you to do this escape the game the escape the park mode it would also I, I i think people aren't considering how much work would then be required to even make the escape the park mode operable not only would dinosaurs have to be able to interact directly with the first person mode which would be another level of coding and let's be fair the dinosaur coding is sketchy enough as it is but you'd also have to increase the capabilities of the first person mode you'd have to be able to have a whole suite of stealth mechanic features in order to be able to to actually have this survival horror-esque mode work you would essentially be trying to combine elements of alien isolation into a game that's already got a huge amount going on in terms of um, you know what it has to process and I think people who are asking for the for this feature to be implemented into the game I think they're and I don't I'm gonna say this and I'm not gonna I'm not trying to be mean but what I think the problem is is that they're trying they don't understand game genre and I've seen this a lot by with younger audiences especially these days so many games are just the same they are open world action adventure with crafting elements and an rpg system so many games have ended up like this you know, pretty much everything made by ubisoft uh, the legend of zelda has turned into this as well 
uh, the Fallout games, Skyrim, every MMO. Um, they're all kind of coalescing into this tendency to all be the same. For people of my age group, we grow up with very tightly focused products. We ended up with things like Half-Life, which was a pretty standard first-person shooter title. We ended up with things like things like Spyro and Crash Bandicoot that were very distinctly simple 3D puzzle platform titles. Even things like the original Call of Duty, which was back in the day just a very simple campaign focused first person World War II shooter. You didn't have all these games that were trying to force other elements of other titles inside of them. Usually for monetization purposes, but often also because they're, you know, why is Ubisoft turning every game into an open world? Well, because they're jumping on the back of the success of things like Skyrim and that, and they're trying to do it themselves and not really understanding what makes those open worlds good and their open worlds boring. So yeah, I think when it comes to younger audiences especially, and I think it, you know, I don't know for certain, but I do think it is the younger audiences asking for these features. I think it's because they are exposed to a lot of games now that have no clear focus and they just want, they, they see every game as being able to have all of these elements and, and be fine. Whereas I think people of my age and around there, we understand the idea that a game has to have a singular focus and that the good games focus heavily on one good, good core element and the bad games are the ones that take quite a scattershot approach to it and create very bland, soulless products. Now, the other thing I would point out also is Frontier is not exactly well known for first-person survival horror titles. Let's be honest, Frontier is well known for making park-building games. They have Elite Dangerous, but I would argue that Elite Dangerous is not really their bread and butter. Their bread and butter is Planet Coaster and Planet Zoo, park building management titles. I'm not saying that companies can't branch out and make really good products. I mean, one of my favorite games of all time, Alien Isolation, was made by a studio whose bread and butter is real-time strategy titles, and they made a remarkably good product. But I think that's the minority. I th that's that's the, the one in a hundred lucky amazing shot somehow i don't see frontier branching out into making a survival horror game that's actually good that's just not what they do the final thing i think is worth mentioning in regards to this is also you have to remember that the sort of implementation of game modes where you could be eaten alive by a dinosaur will instantly result in rating changes and the game is already being developed to be as broad as possible in terms of appeal to age range and group. The minute you add in the ability to be eaten alive by a dinosaur, I suspect that that would change the age rating or sort of uh, the maturity rating of the title in many countries, which would automatically then reduce the broad appeal that I think Universal has been pushing for. So I actually think implementing um, a survival horror-esque game mode into the title would also be completely antithetical to what Universal and Frontier are trying to do. So yeah, for those people who want a survival horror experience, I would just wait for that new Jurassic Park game coming out, which is going to be exactly that. And I think it will be better than trying to force those elements into a park building game. And again, I feel like this is something I say way too often on Reddit, in streams. It's a park building game. That's all it is. That's all it should be. And that's all it should focus on. The park building aspect of the game. Let's have a great park builder. You know, something which is absolutely fantastic. Let's actually get that with the next title. Let's not create a a conglomeration of, of bits. But yeah, that's just my thoughts behind it. 
Let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are about uh, having first person survival horror game modes in Jurassic World Evolution 3. Let me know what you think. Don't forget while you're there to like and subscribe if you're new to the channel and I will see you next time. Until then, stay safe and goodbye.